Hello everyone, it's Rock Coconut Girl here. Magdalena, aka Rock Coconut Girl, a regenerated detoxification specialist and iridologist. And I'm here today with a surprise for each and every one of you. <laughs> Joshua. So oh. how are you today? How is everything? I'm doing quite well. Did you get some sunshine today? Yes, I did. Yes. A little bit. Uh, Florida's been a little rainy lately, but today we had some sunshine. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice to have some rain sometimes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can rest. Well, thank you for being here today. I Ladies and gentlemen, I'm introducing you to my guest, Joshua, who is on his incredible path of healing. Please tell us about yourself. How are you doing? How is your natural healing going? I've been in this process for quite a while, so I would say that the, the most intense parts of it have been the past seven years. Well, most recently, a lot of reevaluating, so just... Uh, preparing again to dive deeper. What does it mean if you can, you know, explain that to our viewers because we understand this path, but many of those who, you know, will be watching us, they, they don't. And if we can put it as a simple sentence as possible to just explain what that path really is hmm. that you are following. Yeah, so I mean, um, a, a lot of times the words detoxification and regeneration have been used. Mm -hmm. So I'll use those for now. And, and uh, I strongly believe that it's possible to regenerate the body and I haven't found the ceiling yet. So um, I've gone through a series of processes over the past seven years. And uh, it's been quite a journey with lots of stops and starts and ups and downs. and. And it's not just a physical one. It's not just a, a mechanical one. It's a very human journey. So there's there's all there's several aspects to it, whether it's spiritual, physical, emotional, mental, and so on. Mm -hmm. I hope that's a, a good answer. It's amazing. It's perfect answer. I love it. I love it. You know, it's good to introduce this path to all each and every one of you as a path of healing naturally and holistically so we look at you know human body in general as a whole it's not like we look into the body just looking for one problem and just fix it with one single herb it's not doesn't work this way we look like in general the body is like a whole piece but it's also connected to the universe right and our god and nature ma mother's earth and things like that uh, so that's why that meaning of holistic approach is important here to explain right exactly exactly this path to healing can be uh, a slow one that requires patience perseverance dedication and uh vision you know and a strong enough why and the understanding of why you're doing it mm -hmm. and uh being able to see the bigger picture, stepping back, don't, don't get lost in the, in, you know, small universe, but spread out a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. So, well, before we jump into your story, your beautiful story, very inspirational story, I would like to just give some update. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my raw coconut juice fast 
for one day. Uh, for one day, I do it weekly uh -huh. to just restart and my body and actually, you know, my digestive system so I can be on fruit later on again and detox, uh, you know, all that chemicals and deposits and stuff like that, that I used to be very also like chronically congested. And I'm still am, it's a long process, you know, it's not a short uh, fix, right? It's not a quick fix, it's, mm -hmm. it's a marathon, so it takes time. So I totally understand what you are saying and what you feel in this situation, because it's been seven years. You've been doing this for seven years. I've been on fruits only for the last five years and mm -hmm. on raw food over 10 years, but the true healing I experienced to be on fruits, on a fruitarian diet. Yes, yeah. I agree. Right, isn't that, like you can even explain that to our audience. What was the difference between your, you know, vegan journey compared to your fruitarian journey? How your body react to all of this? Did you feel any difference being on you know, raw vegan journey, um, that your body is also feeling better at some point? Did you experience any healing crisis, stuff like that? Mm -hmm. My journey with that was a little, uh, how would I say, haphazard, uh, stop and start kind of thing to start off. It wasn't entirely one of those consistent processes that some people start with where it's like, okay, I'm going to go plant-based. Okay, now I'm going to go vegan. Okay, now I'm going to go raw. Okay, you know. I experimented with all sorts of things and I would sort of sometimes swing pretty far back and forth. It's some not so great decisions in the beginning. Um, but I was learning and once I, I got to the point where I could at least stick with pretty much being vegan most of the time, I'd go from long, long periods of, of raw and then periods of fruit that would last from anywhere from seven days to, to over 60. And sometimes it was solid fruit, sometimes it was juices. So I've kind of gone through a little bit of a, a, a learning curve process with it mm -hmm. before I really got to the place where now I'm comfortable with mostly raw most of the time and mostly fruit most of the time. It took me a little while, it's kind of a transition. Uh, a lot of, I ended up kind of sliding a little bit into that kind of mucusless diet healing system approach. Okay. I had some some inspiration from Professor Spira and, and those folks. And there were times when um, I've gone very deep, but for me, sometimes things would get so intense emotionally and energetically speaking that I would have to back up after a while. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, taken a slightly slower approach, but I also have noticed that as time has gone on, I can go deeper and deeper with less of those, like uh, the intensity that I once experienced, yeah. Yeah, this is interesting what you just said, because um, I love what you say. It's not like, you know, it's a transition. It's a long-term transition. It takes time to get to the point where we are today. Yeah. And um, I, so this is also a difficult question to me when someone asks me how long you've been raw. Because to be honest, I've been raw since I was born because I am frugivore, right? Like each and yeah. every one of you. Yeah. Uh, however, and I really, when I was little, I wanted to eat only fruit. And my family remembered me from eating fruit only. I didn't want to eat anything else. but salads and fruits like nothing else i just wanted to eat raw but because so my mom let me to do it for a little bit when i was very young but then she was like no you need to eat meat and dairy you know so i a little bit was pushed because of the society <laughs> i would say but i feel raw like i've been on this path for since i was born like you know and earlier on to in my previous life because i brought this awareness from somewhere right Yes. Like, yeah, it, it, it can't, yes. It can't, yeah, it came with me. But that was an insane that I felt it in a, such a young age. And then when I, I was a teenager and I went super deep into it. Like, I was like, nobody will stop me. Nobody will tell me what to do. 
Uh, however, I had my milk episode too, and uh, mm. so I can tell <laughs> the difference how I felt. <laughs> mm. But I still came back to my raw food, and then people started expecting me to say, "Okay, but so for how many years you've been raw, like fully raw, like you never came back to eating anything but raw?" So I said, "Really, I have to do this? Like, I, I really have to, like, you know, give the date from when I started? Like, I have no idea because that was a long transition, you know." But um. And I, I started saying, okay, I, I'm pretty sure it's been 10 years, but I think it will be over that, that like it passed that 10 years easily. Cause I've been saying that 10 years for the last few years now, because it's hard to tell exact date. Like, and like you said, it's a long process and you can't tell like I've been retiring from this day. Uh, mm. I just want to start today and I'm retiring for next week. It's not how it works, right? This is like a spiritual call, right? It's like a Holy Spirit is coming to the body and it's telling you what to do, right? It gives you yes. the signs. <laughs> what to do next? And you feel it, yeah, like your body feels it, that that's the time to detox. And But with you, it's a little different story because, you know, we, we all experience some... Um, you know, situations in our lives that bring us that um, on that hard part of our journey in our lives that we have to fight through. And you had similar experience with yes. your life. And I, I would like to ask you how in all of the situation that happened to you, did you find this path? Hmm. What happened? In uh, 2010, mm -hmm. I, I was, um, uh, I think I was 24, roughly, and uh, I was I was a traveler. I traveled all over. I did all kinds of jobs. I, I had been planting trees at the time in uh, Alabama. Oh. I was doing a tree planting job, and I did some traveling out west in the southwest in Montana. At the time, I had very little knowledge of uh, raw veganism. I thought fruitarianism was crazy. I, you know, I, I was very much into the whole paleo thing back then. Really? And, yes. No way. I need to share your pictures here with, <laughs> with others. I'll have to get you some before and after stuff. So, uh, you know, I, but at the same time, I had had uh, some inspiration and introduction to some of the the more vegan raw thinking. Um, mm. I had actually done a, a 28 day herbal bowel cleanse by uh, a fellow named Dr. Richard Anderson. He'd written a book called uh, Cleanse and Purify Thyself. And uh, he was a student of uh, Bernard Jensen. Dr. Bernard Jensen yeah. also was an influence for Dr. Morrison. That's right, yeah. He had a book called uh, Tissue Cleansing Through Bowel Management. And so I learned even back then what uh, mucoid plaque was and, and, you know, how to heal the bowel, even though I wasn't sold on a, a completely raw mm -hmm. diet or meat-free diet yet at the time. Mm -hmm. That would have been about 13, 12, 13 years ago now. Wow. But, uh, Following that cleanse, that would have been the spring of 2010, I was in a severe car accident. And um, to make the story relatively shorter, unless you want to hear the whole thing. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I would love to because, you know, I think everybody has their own journey to share. And, mm -hmm. and I think this can be a, amazing inspiration for many people you know that are in a similar situation or even okay so I, i'm from michigan originally and uh at the time i had gone to a friend's place in the manistee national forest which is kind of north central lower michigan on lake michigan it's a beautiful place very beautiful clean water my friend had a nice house in the country with a sauna and uh, really clean water and there were some creeks nearby 
And so I decided to stay there and do this cleanse. This is my first cleanse ever. And I lost 15 pounds of weight out of my bowels. Approximately at the time, I had been a little overweight that winter from eating way too many uh, Subway sandwiches while I was planting trees. I'm sorry for interrupting you, but when I met my husband, boyfriend back then, he was my walking sandwich and he was... <laughs> He was eating Subway and McDonald's when we met, and I just smelled that smell everywhere in a car, in you know his clothes. Everything was like Subway smell. So you uh -huh. reminded me that feeling now. <laughs> I can imagine how you smell that time. Yes. So uh, over the winter, I had gained about uh, yeah about 15 pounds of over my normal weight. Oh, wow. And uh, I was constipated, actually, so much meat and bread, and I was suffering a little bit from that. And so there was a point earlier in the winter where I spent three days on the Stanley Burroughs uh, lemon juice, maple syrup, cayenne, uh, yeah, so and I... And I But uh, I went for three days on that to clear my bowels. Uh huh. How did it go? I broke it with a very large bean and rice burrito. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I have not. Oh my God. I'm happy you're still alive. <laughs> I, uh, I, I got very constipated for the next couple weeks. And, and... Holy smoky, that's a lot. <laughs> Wow. I went traveling out west for about a month and and I wasn't having normal bowel, bowel movements that whole time like it was like just kind of these random not to be too gross but it's just well, how looking... what did you experience after breaking that fast that <laughs> so in a bad way as we know it <laughs> At that time in my life, uh, well, I was very bloated. If, if you're asking what my experience was, I was very bloated. I, I was kind of cranky. Yeah. I was sleeping weird. I, I uh, just didn't feel great you just, for a few it, weeks. Yeah, it's, I think it's important. Also, I'm happy you mentioned that here today as well, because many people are jumping into juicing only, and they do even 100 days of juicing, and then their absorption when they come back to the solid food it's destroyed they can't even digest anything so just i, I can't to break that fast correctly i can't overstress the importance of breaking a fast correctly yes absolutely that's the most important thing you can do yes thank you More thank than... you for sharing this Please continue <laughs> i'm sorry for interrupting you okay you know i got i went through a month of a rough some some suffering um you know too much dry food too much coffee things like that back then i was dehydrated and I just felt terrible and I was like, all right, I really got to do something about this. I know that my friend Brian has done this cleanse a few times. I'm going to go back to Michigan and settle down at my friend's place and try this, right? Mm -hmm. So I went there and into the, the forest and I stayed in this quiet place and, and I did all these herbs and um, and some, at the time I was doing some uh, bentonite clay charcoal and psyllium oh, yeah. shakes yeah okay you have to be careful with those but um enemas as well and Ooh. during that time i lost that uh that 15 pounds and the, the constipation went away i, I transitioned okay mm -hmm. it brought up a lot of raw emotion and uh that whole winter i'd been traveling i realized that i didn't have a sense of purpose and i felt a little lost Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing, where I was supposed to be, why I was here. All these questions coming up for me, and uh, I kept asking. Mm -hmm. During that cleanse is kind of how these insights come up when your mind clears, and that, you know, your mind starts to clear. And I started asking questions, and, and I actually made a direct request to the universe, and I said it with all sincerity. I want to do something that I've never done before that I'm not comfortable with. Mm. I don't know why I needed that kind of challenge. Wow. I had something in mind, but it surely wasn't what I got. <laughs> and uh, I spoke this directly to one of my best friends too at the time. I told him what I had asked for. 
And I, I recall the look on his face being one of uh, intrigue. And uh, I spent a few weeks helping a friend with a project at a university. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd had this falling out and, and I, I, had, I was running away from a problem that I didn't want to face in this friendship of mine. I'd come up against a trauma. Something about that cleanse had like started bubbling up some emotions and I didn't really, even following the cleanse, I didn't really have all the tools to deal with it. So I ran away, mm -hmm. literally driving away to Northern Wisconsin to visit my brother on this farm that I used to work on. The day that I was leaving, that morning, it would have been uh, May 15th, I believe, 2010. There was a point where I got to this kind of fork in the road where I could have gone north or I could have gone back to my friend's place. And I had the strongest feeling, go back to your friend's place and stay for one more night. I ignored that and I drove north instead. I had a little Toyota mini pickup, a little pickup truck. It was kind of old and rusty and I was having brake problems. And uh, when I got into Wisconsin around two in the afternoon, everything felt surreal. Um, it was a warm day and sort of felt like I was in a dream. And I had my driver's side window down and I was traveling at about 55 miles per hour. And uh, I had hair as, about as long as yours at the time. And uh, oh, cool. <laughs> show me that pictures, please. <laughs> okay. A grasshopper flew through my driver's side window and, and smacked me in the ear. Um, very hard. Wow. And I kind of ignored that and I kept driving. And I looked over to my right and a friend had given me a jar of honey that I set on the seat and I realized I had somehow knocked the jar over and spilled all the honey on the seat. Oh my goodness. And all of that, right after I looked at the honey, I heard this buzzing sound. And there happened to be a bumblebee sitting on top of my head. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? Yeah. What a day. Okay, keep going. <laughs> And uh, I, pan I panicked a little bit because I didn't want to get stung. And I was trying to brush this bee off the top of my head. And I knocked it down and it, it fell on the seat and I was trying to brush it off the seat. And what I should have done was pull over right there, but I didn't pull over. I, I was looking down too long. I looked up and I realized that my truck was about to go off the road. So I turned my wheel really tight to the right and it caused my truck to flip. And my truck flipped end over end, I don't know how many revolutions, until it landed in a ditch. I remember seeing a drainage tube go by and all this stuff clattering and rattling and came to, this, to a stop. I was in a ditch looking through a crack and I was upside down. Wow. And my whole body was uh, buzzing like mad, like had this buzzing feeling, adrenaline or, or something. And uh, I thought I was going to be able to crawl out, right? So I tried to move, but I couldn't move. I could barely move my arms. I don't know how I was breathing. And uh, this man shows up by the side of the road and I can see him walking down into the ditch through, through the crack that I could see out through the truck. And he says, are you alive? Are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm okay. Can you pull me out of here? And he said, uh, just hang on. The paramedics will be here in about 15 minutes. I didn't know that I was really trapped in there. Mm -hmm. So I just started talking and before he came down, I had just called out for help. Like I said, God help me. And then I just was calling for help. And, and that's when he showed up and I just started talking and I don't remember anything I said to him, but I just talked to him for like 20 minutes, told him about my experience, what my life was like, what's happening today. Just anything to keep me awake. I guess that was kind of what was in my head. And then he said, do you have anything illegal you want me to get out of the truck before the police get here? <laughs> I said no. And uh, I did actually have some cannabis in the back of my truck at the time, <laughs> which was illegal in Wisconsin at the time. Happy that this <laughs> angel showed up to help you ahead of time. You know? Yeah. 
Well, a funny thing about that is the police found it, but they, they didn't charge me at all. They said, you've been through enough. <laughs> so anyhow, the paramedics arrived and I was kind of in shock at that point. They, they had to cut the cab open to get me out with some kind of saw. And uh, they rolled me onto a stretcher. And uh, right before, right, right when they got me into the ambulance, I gave them my brother's phone number. I asked them to take me to a certain city to the north, which was 100 miles north, uh, where all my friends were. And uh, then I passed out. And uh, some hours the later, they- you stopped talking. Huh? You stopped talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some hours later, they drove me up. Uh, they had driven me up to a trauma center in northern Michigan uh, in a town called Marquette. And um, I was in the intensive care unit there for about three weeks, two or three weeks. And then I was flown to a rehab hospital in Denver, Colorado. That changed my entire life. Really, I kind of, kind of see it as having died in a way. You know, my old life was gone. I was fully transitioned into a whole new world that I didn't even know exactly what I was getting into. I was, I broke my neck at the fifth and sixth vertebrae. I had a fracture at the second cervical vertebrae. I crushed my spinal cord and uh, I subluxed my spine, which means the, the, ver the vertebrae were popped off to the side and they had to re-straighten my spine. And, uh, uh, they put in what they call Harrington rods and some screws to hold my neck together. And um, that paralyzed me from the chest down. Uh, so from about, yeah, just below my armpits. And that left me with some arm and hand function, which was very weak at the time. Yeah, there's a whole process that I went through at, in the ICU. You know, I had a tube going down into my lungs. I, I couldn't eat, I, I couldn't breathe on my own. I had a machine to, to, uh, to help me breathe. And uh, I had a tube going through my nose that they would feed me with. And uh, I had a, a brace on my neck for a couple months. And um, I had, like the wildest dreams. <laughs> All kinds of crazy experiences during that time. Just a whole new reevaluation started of my connection with, with that which we call God and, and the universe and myself and the people around me. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot to say about it, but that's kind of what happened. And after a few months of rehabilitation in, in Colorado, I was sent home to Michigan. Hey. Hey, there you learning the basics, relearning the basics and learning the basics of what it's like to live in a wheelchair and... Uh... May I uh, hang on for a second, just a second. Um, mm -hmm. I just want to say that um, I am impressed. Um, I feel sad. I, I, I know that you already agreed what happened, right? Because you need mm -hmm. to find, you have no choice, but... Um, but I look at you how strong you are. I I I'm definitely think that not you know everything happened for a reason and this reason happened to you because you are so strong. And I'm, I'm I think you are here in this world to show and prove what the health really is, you know, like you are a proved human that is healing naturally from very low level, like you you know, you you hit the bottom so hard, and now look at you, like you did incredible things, you know, in your life till now. 
and you still continue doing it, um, uh, I strongly believe. But um, you are such an inspiration, and this is this is something incredible about you that um, not everyone would do that. Like many people would give up if they were they would in your shoes. You know, they 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 wouldn't make it. And and look at you. You strongly believe in the natural way of healing, and you went through all these healing processes. You went through all that teachings till you got to the fruitarianism and to the to our beautiful herbs and stuff but we'll talk about it a little bit later like i am impressed i i feel honored talking to you today and you know you sharing this story with me means a lot to me because it's something very unique and you know i strongly believe that you are very unique and you have your mission. You are on your mission now, you know, to yeah, prove the world, <laughs> to prove Thank everyone, you. yeah, how powerful your body is, your mind and spirit. It's just so beautiful and nobody can do it. And you are actually one of the best examples here of, you know, real natural healing. <laughs> and no one can, ex you know, even explain and, and can share with because they don't have that. And you are blessed in my, what I think you are blessed with a beautiful heart because not everyone has that either. And you are blessed with this journey that, you know, your God still supported you. And look, he gave you a heads up with a grasshopper before and the beer on the top of your head. What the heck now? <laughs> Like, I don't understand that, but that sounds, whoa, like. It gave me three that? warnings. The yes. first one was, first one was the strong, strong feeling that I should not go up that highway that morning. You had that feeling, see? I, I ignored my intuition. Opposite to your <laughs> intuition. <laughs> if anything, it taught me to listen to my intuition, to listen to the messages. And uh, I've had a lot of support on this journey. I've had a lot of wonderful, wonderful people supporting me on this journey. That's helped me a lot. And, yes. This and is uh, and I think the second most sincere question I asked after I was injured was, I want to heal and I want to know what true healing is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've been exploring that ever since. Yeah. I. I I can imagine and I, I I can easily say you're our hero you know it's really it's like I am really impressed the way you speak the way you talk about it how calm you are and peaceful with this whole situation and that you are in and you are in peace with yourself and this is this is you're blessed you know because even when you are in this path of detox and people do their daily routine stuff and you can't physically follow, you feel in a peace and other people would be like depressed. They, they really wouldn't even be any longer in this world. And so you you are a beautiful human. I just, I'm just impressed. And thank you for, for sharing that. Can you tell me, have you ever had a feeling of not being able to do it? you know, to do it anymore, like this natural. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I have gone through some times where it was very, very intense, especially in terms of healing crises and emotional sensitivities. So two two things I can think of. There was one time where I did um, a grape juice fest for 62 days, and uh, I was going to see um, a colon hydrotherapist regularly to, uh, to clean my colon out. And uh, probably four weeks into that cleanse, one night I developed this extremely high fever, like I, my body temperature spiked very high. And you and were I, on herbs back then, right? I was, I was on an herbal protocol from Dr. Morris at the time, yes, along with the, the grape juice. And you started that seven years ago, that Dr. Morris' protocol. I did. I, I went through several uh, over the years. That particular time was um, 
that I'm speaking of now is approximately five years ago, four years, four or five years ago. And um, I went through this healing crisis where my whole body went into uh, kind of like spa a spastic state where my muscles were cramping up so tight that it, it was, I couldn't relax. Everything was cramping and tightening up in my whole body and my body temperature went really high. And I was in a lot of pain for for uh, several hours until finally my body released and I just slept so deep and so like relaxed but it was very painful to get there and uh, in the morning I still had a fever when my nurse comes in and she's like whoa you're so hot I could cook an egg on you and <laughs> And um, no fruit, no eggs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no eggs. Uh, I I recovered from that, but when I got to the 62 day point, because I had intended to go more than 100 at the time, mm -hmm. it just got so intense for me, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, I I need a I need a break. I I don't feel like I can do this right now, and so I stopped it. I slowed down, and I transitioned what was your temperature? out. Temperature? Uh. I would guess around 103, maybe. Okay, okay. you developed a really nice fever. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. This yeah. is what we wanted you to have. Yeah, uh, awesome. it, it didn't really deter me from doing future cleanses, but it it's, uh, I can't say that I've ever had a time where I wanted to, like, where I, where I wanted to quit completely. Mm -hmm. I had moments where I was frustrated or moments where I knew I needed to stop but I never really like said, uh, all right, I'm gonna throw in the towel and just walk away from all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, come to think of, there were times of like, like deep sadness or depression early, early on where it's like, why don't I just give up on this whole journey and just like, just like, I might as well just live a quote unquote normal life. And <laughs> But I realized that I had passed the point of going back because once you find this relief from suffering that I found and discovered and really experienced, it's like, how, how can I go back to that? There's a part of me, there's this little vestige in here that's emotionally attached to maybe that macaroni and cheese I used to eat, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and sometimes I'm like, I just want some macaroni and cheese, you know, but Get you look at- drag. Yeah, give me some drugs. <laughs> But that there was an awareness that I developed that that yes. let me know, okay, this is why I'm craving that. Yeah. You know, I'm looking for some kind of emotional satisfaction. I'm looking for some grounding, maybe because I feel sensitive to this world. This world can be intense sometimes when you live in a town. Or, yes. You, know, um, you kind of want to, you know, try to suit to the dualism in this world. Like you don't want to, you know, fly too much. Yes. <laughs> yes, so, uh, but overall, mm -hmm. I've always come back to a perseverance and an inspiration to continue. Mm -hmm. And I've been fortunate to have people who appear in my life. Just some birthday tea, you know, nothing special. Just some birthday tea. <laughs> the green tea, as a matter of fact, organic. <laughs> Including my current partner, who are so supportive. I am happy, that, so happy for you. Yeah, it kind of helps keep me in line a little bit, you know, and um, it's so important to have such a, you know, good, good human <laughs> next yeah. to you, who is your angel, guardian angel, and is helping you, you know, to, to do this path of day by day. been your most difficult experience and we can talk here about your healing crisis and and everything else you would love to share uh, your heart desires some of my most difficult experiences have been more of an emotional and mental nature than than the physical aspects i'm familiar with physical suffering i would say the most difficult aspect of that was chronic pain in the beginning mm -hmm. um, after a spinal cord injury a lot of 
changes happen in the body. The body's in shock, it's confused. Signals aren't getting from the brain to the rest of the body the same way they used to. So everything slows down, everything changes. Your bowel becomes what they call neurogenic. You have a neurogenic bladder, which means you can't control your bladder, you can't control your... Uh, your, your an- yeah, you can't control your anus, you can't pee on your own, you're, you're dependent on a catheter. Mm-hmm. Uh, bowel movements are dependent on uh, a pharmaceutical called the suppository, which uh, uh, stimulates peristalsis in the rectum. Mm-hmm. So when I was first in the rehab hospital, having gone through so much trauma, I found myself slipping back into, at that time, even though a friend that was with me would make me these fruit smoothies in the morning, I would still be eating things like um, eggs and fried potatoes or uh, there was a there was a guy down the hall that was giving me uh, a ginger ale and a candy bar every day (laughs) and so I was emotionally feeding myself not only that I was on lots of uh, pharmaceutical drugs to deal with all these different symptoms they had me on several blood thinners they had me on that, that's um, not surprising that you craved something, your spirit actually, your soul craved something different to calm you down, you know? Because, yeah. Yeah, yeah and uh, it was a great hospital to be in as far as hospitals go. Uh, I had a lot of good therapists, a lot of good physical therapy, but the, the knowledge in the food department was lacking, that's for sure. And uh, so, But that wasn't my main focus at the time. Looking back at the old pictures, I could tell I was quite inflamed. Uh, you know, like red face, um, kind of puffy. And I was dealing with a lot of chronic pain. I, I was dependent on things like uh, hydrocodone or, or Vicodin, oh, as it's known. Oh, don't tell me that. I remember and, after my surgeries, when they gave me hydrocodone, oxycodone, I yes. did, you know, a little bit of that to just release my pain, like after surgeries. And yes. I felt so high. Like I've never, yeah. like I never experienced such a thing because I never took drugs before. That was my first time when they really like dragged me and I was like not feeling well and I stopped taking it immediately. Like <laughs> it was one my time and only when I felt that this is, this stuff is dangerous. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we know what we are talking about. That's why I stopped even after that first bill. Yeah, my, my parents were careful not to give us pharmaceutical drugs for the most part growing up. So by the time that time rolled around and I was getting this whole pharmacopoeia of of these of different drugs, whether for my bowel, my bladder, my blood pressure, my my blood thinning, my you name it, pain, uh, I started to feel crazy. I literally started to feel like weird in my brain, in my head, couldn't think properly. I felt gross. I felt depressed. Who am I? <laughs> yeah, a little out there with so many different drugs. And I finally was able to talk to my doctor at the time, closer to the time I was leaving. And he said, I'm all about reducing meds. So I tried to reduce as many as I could. And I was down to maybe four or five by the time I left the hospital. And they really liked to push them. (laughs) But uh, when I got home, I had this chronic pain where it felt like I was in boiling water from my chest to my toes all day long and it made it hard to want to think or interact or talk to people. And I, I was just trying, there was a point where I was trying cannabis for a while to help deal with it. It didn't take the pain away, it just helped me sleep. And I would spend a lot of time sleeping. And um, there was a point where I realized, well, none of this is really taking the pain away. It's just like a Band-Aid, so to speak. And uh, what do I need to do? Well, I I know about a raw food diet. Why don't I try that? Mm-hmm. And so I, I, as up to that point, I had just been doing whatever. I was actually drinking beer and eating pizza, and <laughs> and taking herbs. I hadn't uh, learned about the herbs yet. Oh, uh, not yet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so that was ten, ten, ten years ago, maybe. Approximately. Yes. All right. Let's call and, it that way. <laughs> <laughs> 10 years ago, yes. And so uh, there was a point though where I kept requesting like, God, I wanna know what true healing is. I wanna, I wanna, and then there was a point where I had this realization one winter. 
I know better. Why am I not taking better care of myself? Why am I not doing this? I had been- Why, why to show up? I had been wallowing in some depression. I'd been wallowing yeah. in in uh, apathy and uh, yeah. learned helplessness. Of course. And so, but one day I discovered Dan McDonald on YouTube right. and I was watching him make this cabbage salad. <laughs> and so I had a, a roommate at the time that was somewhat in the raw foods as well. And so we just started eating a lot of raw food together. Mind you, I was eating these huge salads with like lots of oil on them. Oh, and oh lots of oil. oil. Oh, yeah, like oh. uh, olive oil mostly. Oh, but, okay. <laughs> All right. But, uh, you know, at the time I hadn't recognized the importance of lower fat. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was really going for the fat and, and it seemed like I needed that for satiation at the time. And sometimes and, uh, you need that, yeah, you need that stronger transition and some planes of, of mine, I mm -hmm. put them on transition protocols where they still sometimes have meat and they still sometimes have fish because I don't want them to transition too hard so yes. they get the, to the point of healing crisis too fast so uh, yeah, yes I I understand that and even if you put you likely wear raw so that all yes. are fine your your body is strong enough to deal with it at the beginning yes uh, and I still had I still had eggs on occasion back then and uh, oh, that first okay. that first year mm -hmm and bread <laughs> i'm not surprised because the nurse wanted to boil an egg on you uh, yeah <laughs> that's probably <laughs> what happened the, that that grape juice fast was several years later uh, and how the, long did, it, did you do it for so right around that time i decided to, to go raw that would have been about uh 2011 or 12 about a year and a half after the injury my friend happened to be pretty proliferate on the internet at the time and he had discovered a Dr. Morse video where he's interviewing Roger Leaphart. Roger Leaphart was a quadriplegic who he had worked with for a year and his spine had straightened itself out. He lost 100 pounds. And I was watching it and I got really, really excited. I got really excited and I was just, thank you God, this is just what I was asking for today. And uh, I just started researching everything I could. I started watching his videos and and really, really got into it. And then I ran into a couple practitioners at the time um, that had recently taken classes with him. And I started talking with them and I met one particular fellow and uh, he was persistent. I was a little resistant at first. I'm like, he's like, I can help you. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. It's like yeah, I can help open, you. You know, as yeah. specialist, we want to help, but some people <laughs> are just then rejecting that help. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I finally, I, I started just conversing with him. You uh -huh. know, because he was from California, and it was just a random message online, and then we started having Skype sessions, and I ended up being the only client that he worked with for free for many years, and we became good friends. Oh, and, that's, so nice of him. Hmm? that's so nice of him yeah yeah and uh he he would even help me get a discounts on herbs and so on and we, we got on our protocol pretty quickly and i spent whatever i could afford and um i started discovering the world of detox and regeneration and there's so much I kind of wish I had written down and recorded because it's been so much in seven years, things flow together for me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but what I noticed over time, over a few months time, getting into all fruit, getting into the herbs, slowly, but surely the pain started to subside. After about a year, two years, uh, the pain was so small I didn't need drugs anymore. I wasn't irritable anymore. I could sleep really good. I became much more flexible because I had a lot of muscle spasms. Like I would have these spasms in my back that would throw oh. me out of my wheelchair. Oh and, yeah. Okay. And uh, I was I was very stiff and dehydrated early on, and I had edema in my feet. I had such severe constipation that I was bleeding rectally. You know, it would take an hour to have a bowel movement, more than an hour sometimes. And um, 
I was bloated and, and in chronic pain and tired all the time. And all that went away. All of that healed and... Um, you look amazing. Like, yeah. I wouldn't even tell that you went through so many things. You yeah. know, went through a lot. And and I'm, I look at you as a, you know, individual and you look great. You look fantastic. Like, I wouldn't even tell that you are very strong, Joshua. Like, well, your body, you must have pretty good genes. I would love to see your iris. <laughs> <laughs> I have some eye pictures from maybe two years ago, but uh, I I do I would like to go down to Dr. Morse's office and get some fresh ones. I should have done that last it, time I was down there. But when when I will be in Florida, I, I definitely would love to see your eyes <laughs> in person and would love because they look totally different than the pictures. It's yeah. just like so good to learn from people like you, from individuals like you, because it's a blessing to have you here and you know experience that path in depth you know like yeah. yeah that i can see like really deep healing it's not that like a healing chronic I, i'm not saying i don't want to compare anybody's issues to someone's issues because you know everybody yeah it's like you know someone easy issue for us can be like the end of the world right so we can't say compare such a thing but but of course your situation is it's different and it's unique and and I, I i think we can learn from you a lot you know from your experience i think one of the reasons i have kept going is because i'm fascinated by it i i got into it and and it, it kind of draws me I'm, I'm curious i like to experiment so isn't that cool <laughs> it's right it's a it's a lifestyle, right? It, it yeah. became your hobby and it's like passion and you can't change it. This is amazing. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So uh, I've, I've healed many symptoms and I got off all my meds except two, which I, I rarely need one of them anymore. I barely ever use it. And the other one is just to help my bowels empty in the morning. And, you know, where I used to be on probably 10 or so. Wow. And, uh, and that was years ago though it's been many years and uh, I've only dealt with two since then and you know I'm not walking yet you know I I you know I haven't regenerated all my nerves I love what you say what you just <laughs> said I'm not walking yet yet <laughs> like I said I'm earlier I, <laughs> I haven't discovered the ceiling here so uh, it, it's a it's a process, and mm -hmm. I haven't gone to the depth yet that I feel might be necessary. Mm -hmm. And also along the way, I'm learning too that it's as much up here and in your heart as it is in the physiological aspect of it. And so uh, there's been a lot of process and practice in getting my mind right and my heart right for for what I'm trying to create here. And part of that actually involves a bit of surrender. It's not all me doing the work, you know. Of course, yeah. And so um, you are the root. You are you're the yeah, foundation of everything. So without you, yes. There's that, that inner foundation for sure, and and rooting into it and and holding it. Yeah. Who is your inspiration? Who? Uh, well. I've had so many over the years. I mean, Dr. Morse is a big one. It's been a big one for me. Yeah. Dr. Richard Anderson before him was a big inspiration for me. Um, they were sort of the the foundation, the root catalysts for me on this journey when it comes to health and healing. There were other teachers for sure. I can't think of them all because there's so many. Of course. Arnold Errett's been a I'm big influence. You know, that, you know, that's diamonds you know yes <laughs> that are yes. the most important yes that you are following yes and there have been teachers who were more towards the you know the spiritual aspects and less towards the health aspect that were really good for me as well and also i had a i had a qigong teacher it's a tight it's it's an older it's a precursor to tai chi mm -hmm. uh, you're familiar with it maybe it's a type of um, meditation practice they do in in uh, Asia and, and it's popular here in the US these days. Are you still practicing this one? I do, yeah. Probably not as regular as I should, but uh, 
often. You practice, you, practice, you know, as much as your soul desires. So. Yes. <laughs> That's the there you go. Yeah, and, and getting into the fruit and, and uh, long periods of time, I notice my body is sensitive to all sorts of energies, whether external or and also some internal intuition. I, I've experienced some pretty interesting visions. I've experienced um, feeling connected to nature in such a way that it's like I'm part of this big spider web, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, also just empathy and, and recognizing too that the environment I'm in around me can be very impactful on my thoughts and emotions. I'm happy you're talking about it. And I think Joshua, if you don't mind me asking again, I think that would be awesome if we make another video and focus only on spirituality. That would be great. Right, and just spirituality, of course, the food is connected to it because without mm -hmm. the food, we won't achieve that level of electromagnetic yeah. <laughs> energy. Yeah, but um, but I think that's a separate huge subject that we can yes. really yeah, go dive into very deep. But I still have more questions that I would like to ask you before we jump into like spirituality that we won't stop talking about you know <laughs> yes yes go ahead uh, because it's so exciting i i love talking about spiritual stuff they're so wow it's just mind blown Briny sea, while I sing you wail 